Well, we had to address it uh, immediately uh, in very practical sense because the um, we were working again with a number of advisors, police and fire advisors, and a number of them were there and several of them were missing throughout the first days, uh, including uh, Molly Price had married one of the firemen that she had met, uh, one of the stars of the show, and and he was missing for almost 48 hours. One of those people who wasn't able to actually make a phone call was trying to get his friends out of the rubble, but she didn't know that if he was there or not, or if he was actually in there. And then we owned um, fire engines and <clears throat> things for the show and such, so much of their material was destroyed on the day that the department called us up and asked for all of our equipment. So <clears throat> the third watch fire engine was actually on active duty for, you know, a while afterwards. And Brooke Kennedy, who is the line producer on the show, now does The Good Wife, sent over our catering, all of our lighting. We set up emergency lights at uh, Ground Zero. Um, and so we were out of production for quite a while. Uh, and because we knew so many people, and I think we were all searching around for what to do, um, I went in and interviewed a lot of the people who we worked with and did a documentary that NBC then, um, that then broadcast called In Their Own Words, which was about, uh, In Their Own Words, which was about a lot of the people who were there. They'd end up winning a Peabody, actually, so, which was actually just us in the weeks afterward trying to kind of process what had happened to a lot of the people that we knew very well. Because um, there were a number of people who actually appeared in the series who died that day, uh, you know. <clears throat> and it took us a little while to kind of figure out what we could possibly do. There was a sense on both West Wing and Third Watch because of the subject matter that we really had to deal with it. Aaron ended up writing what turned out to be kind of probably the most controversial episode that we ever did because people either loved it or hated it because I think there was a lot of feeling that it was a polemic. But I defended it at the time and defend it to this day as, as an artist when something happens and you feel like there's something you want to say about it, you know, you say it. And particularly if you have the, the uh, soapbox from which to say it, you can agree with it or disagree with it. He had every right to write it. And, you know, it was how he felt at the time. And on Third Watch, we had to actually do it. It was impossible to do something about New York first responders and not actually do something about it. So we did the documentary and then we worked it into our story stories and there were people who objected to it as if we were you know and said that that are we sensationalizing a tragic event where is that line where something has really happened that doing it as entertainment is inappropriate um and i don't know that you can ever figure out exactly where that line is you only have to be try to be true to this notion that you're trying to be honest about how you feel at the moment with it and you're not using it exploitively to simply generate ratings or to try and take advantage of other people's tragedy. That's, the, that's a kind of a line that we're on all the time with, with all of these shows in which there is melodrama that's present, at present in which things really happen, in which you're hearing people's real stories. Um, you just All you can do is try to be honest to what your impression as an artist is of the thing that's being told to you. Or you have to remove yourself from, completely from it so that it's really clear to the audience that you're commenting upon it. Again, I use the Quentin Tarantino example where he's, you know, clearly there weren't, wasn't a whole bunch of guys who were looking for scalps, for Nazi scalps. But what is true about it is there was fury and anger about how to do it. So you're kind of in a territory where you're <clears throat> satirizing it, it and yet there is something truthful about it. But when, with the kind of things that we do in the sort of documentary reality that comes in the way in which we try and shoot them, you have to just be honest about the emotions of the people who are there. And I felt very confident doing it because I'd actually gone and personally been on this other side of this camera uh, within you know, two and a half weeks of it with a number of people who had been there and had lost friends and had lost spouses and, you know, and who we knew. Um, but these, these things are delicate lines, you know, and I, and I object sometimes to what I feel are people, uh, you know, the, the joke, the kind of the, the Saturday Night Live joke is somebody doing something and turning the camera going too soon. <laughs> sometimes it's too soon. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that I think is dependent upon how you actually choose to treat it and whether you have based it on something that's real or whether you've based it only on your impression from outside of that event. Uh, of what you think it is as compared to 
what you actually heard from the people who were there.